everyone. This is Ben Pierce from Urban Vinyl Daily's Weekly Wrap Up here with Mike Giant at uh, his show at Interstate Gallery. Mike, how are you doing? I'm doing great tonight. So, Mike, we see a lot of red dots and a lot of very good pieces. Do you? Oh, you, good. Yeah. So, you, could you tell us a little bit about like what went into preparing for the show and? Um. Well, the vast majority of these pieces were all produced within the last two or three months, I'd say. Um, after I did my last show in San Francisco, I had nothing left, so I really had to start from scratch. So everything is really, really recent. I think there's only two pieces that we had from a previous show that we've included because it made sense to. Um, but yeah, it's all brand new, a lot of different size stuff, um, including the biggest piece that I've ever yeah. done, actually, the six by six footer in the back. Yeah. Um, but, you know, as well as the big stuff, I've got a bunch of uh, eight and a half by 11, like standard letter size drawings, too. So. Yeah, those seem really popular. Like a lot of red dots around those, too. Well, I think my collector base, for the most part, is younger people that don't have a lot of money to spend mm -hmm. on fine art, to be honest. Yeah. So I really make a concerted effort to uh, produce pieces of a smaller size that I can offer for a few hundred bucks. Yeah. So is there anything special like you that went into making a Detroit-based show as compared to like a San Francisco or a Denver or New York? Well, sure. I mean, there's a few pieces here that directly uh, speak about Detroit. Um, and it definitely was in the back of my mind the whole time that I was producing all this work because, like I said, it was all made knowing full well that it was going to be shown here. You know, I really had to make it all at once. So, yeah, I don't know if it comes through. You know, it comes through a few in a few places, literally, but otherwise, it's kind of a subtler uh, influence, I would say. Maybe some uh, some Kiss references for some Detroit city rock and. Yeah, it's, that's just it. I guess it's more in the notes than the the figurative elements in the pieces themselves. If you read through the notes, you can definitely tell I was thinking a lot about Detroit. Yeah. Um, uh, I was a raver big time in the 90s and was really into Detroit techno so that's something interesting that I've been I was listening to a lot of uh, Detroit techno artists while I was making this work and their names are mentioned on the pieces too so they, there are definitely some some things that are Detroit centric and certainly some things that absolutely have nothing to do with Detroit in particular yeah. like suicidal tendencies or oh sure that's just stuff you know just as much as the the pencil notes and the backgrounds of the pieces are just kind of what I'm thinking about in the moment, so is the subject matter. You know, I think I was just listening to an old Suicidal Tendencies record in the studio, and I was like, why don't I do that Suicidal Skull again? That thing's classic, you know? And I, so I did it, you know? It's yeah. as simple as that. That's how a lot of it happens. So looking at the pictures and, like, the pencil notes, what goes, like, what's the inspiration, like, does the black and white come through first or do the pencil notes kind of guide you towards what's going to show up on the paper? I do I do the uh, the inked illustration in the middle of the, the paper first, for okay. sure. And then uh, usually what I'll do is I'll smoke a joint and I'll put on a comedy album or a podcast. So I start to be thinking in words and yeah. that kind of thing. And then I just kind of start writing out whatever comes to mind. I see it's very James Joyce, just very stream of consciousness and stuff like that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And also, I'm really into meditation practice and trying to practice mindfulness while I'm working. So it's this way of like listening to my thinking mind versus uh, thinking that that's me, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and so the pencil notes are kind of a reflection of that, of just this kind of... Uh, I don't know. It's, it's like it's not really me. It's like when I put the stuff up on the wall and I go back and listen and, and read the comments, it's fascinating to me yeah. because it lets me know what I was thinking about in that moment without any connection to it or thinking uh, I need to act on those things or there's emotional stuff connected to them. You know? Yeah. It's just thought. It's just thoughts. Yeah. So do you find good balance between your... Uh your graffiti bubble letters and your like your fine art, fine pencil or fine fine oh, line. Oh sure, work. that's that's the balance. Um, for years I made tattoos, and it's very permanent. Every line counts. Very detail oriented. Stressful. 
graffiti is basically the complete opposite of that. Where I can paint as big as I can reach. I can do it however the fuck I want. Yeah. Nobody's telling me what they want or how they want it done. It's totally free. And in that way, I've needed that balance. And I guess kind of in the middle of those is the illustration work. You know, I'll yeah. infuse graffiti into it here and there, just because that's really a part of who I am. But at the same time, I'm 45 years old, and the tagger shit, it, it can only get me so far. Yeah. You know, I, I, there's other themes that I need to, I feel the need to express that, you know, go well beyond that. Which we've seen several artists. Uh, you're familiar with the DF crew, and se yeah. several of yeah. their artists have transcended from graffiti tags to fine art. Absolutely. Like Scribe and East. East Absolutely. made a book. Yep. And yep. so... No, no, that's, that's just it. I think it... On one level, it teaches you how to market yourself, and you can certainly translate that into the real world and business and whatnot. And also, I think just, you know, a lot of the creative young people of the 90s and 2000s uh, would automatically be kind of drawn to graffiti writing and whatnot as an expressive force. Mm -hmm. And for them then to go on into professional life and do great things, that makes perfect sense. It's almost cliche now in the tattooing community that you were probably an ex graffiti writer. <laughs> well, it's the, it's the same mind frame, yeah. the same rebellious kind of attitude that leads you into those things. Yeah. So it should, it should make sense as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. So as far as uh, the name Impermanent Vacation, mm. what's the motivation behind that? I have it tattooed right here on my hands. Okay. You can see that there. Uh, it's, it's another Buddhist kind of a thing where I'm trying to be conscious of the fact that life is impermanent, but it also should be seen as a vacation, that this human existence is meant to be enjoyed and that we have this tremendous opportunity to be able to walk around the world like a tree is stuck. Mm -hmm. But in a lot of ways, we're like a tree. I mean, that's some hippie Buddha shit, but you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. We have this opportunity to walk around. We can travel the planet. Now our species can fly. Mm -hmm. We can exist under the ocean water for yeah. a long time. You know what I mean? Like, So it's a real uh, special thing for us to be human. And I think I'm just trying to kind of get at that yeah. in some way. I, you know, and I don't think I'm very successful because I personally know the depth of the experience of connectedness to the universe, <laughs> you know? But I'm just drawing, you yeah. know? Like, I'm not really... We each have our own journey. At it. We yeah. each have our own journey. So my, my journey is different than your journey, so who's sure. to say that it's different or wrong? Absolutely. Absolutely. I know that this, that's the case. I think every one of us has the same amount of potential and power in our lives and drive and I you know yeah I think it's amazing that we're even here to experience yeah. this yeah honestly it sounds crazy <laughs> I've been drinking too much wine <laughs> no it's, it's per perfect sense <laughs> yeah so Mike that's real th thanks for taking time with me for your My pleasure your show at Impermanent Vacation yep. at Interstate Gallery in Detroit yep. Yep. Are, any parting words as far as where people can find you like Instagram or yeah I'm OG Mike Giant on Instagram and I do have a website it's just MikeGiant.com okay yeah easy as that yeah thank you very much thank and you end of the weekend wrap up This is Travis Likens from Token Nerd Podcast, and I'm here today to tell you something about sponsorship. That's right. Token Nerd now has a sponsor. The fine folks at TenaciousToys.com, your source for designer toys, pop vinyl, original art, and more, are now our sponsor. And guess what? As a part of that, you can get 10% off your next order at TenaciousToys.com by entering the code TOKEN10 at checkout. That's right, 10% off. And not only are they giving you this code, they're also going to be sponsoring many of our token nerd giveaways in the next coming months. So make sure to follow us at token underscore nerd on Instagram to catch our latest giveaways.